So, I guess the first thing we need to address here is the elephant in the room, or glorious tentacular monster, with a brand new outfit and look. This one's a bit more personal, things I actually wear or own, so it seemed appropriate to move away from the skeptic clone label of a quote, animal avatar in a suit, to this. There was, and is, going to be a background for this avatar specifically in the future, a new room in fact, through that archway over there, but due to an immense workload by my architect, aka Curious Cucumber, who is a fantastic artist, look what she did, this is glorious. She has been unable to get past a certain line art stage, which is in fact on my minds page if you are at all interested to see the direction I am going. Link to that below. Now, although the subject matter is something of a more dark and sinister nature, and ordinarily that would be better suited to Judge Moist, I wanted to introduce this avatar to you now, because I intend to use this full time in the future. I am not retiring the content cop one, because I have a video that I'm working on with that. Judge Moist is going nowhere. The Joker, well, yeah, no. No, I'm not getting rid of that either and I have no intention of ditching either of my onesies. There are some poses for this in the future, but Christina Prime is very, very busy, and has only just finished, I believe, two poses of the four intended, along with myself in my armchair, where I will always look glorious. So, to get back on topic, the subject is quite dark. We're going to cover two subjects of a certain level of cruelty, that must be named, shamed, pointed out, and put on blast. Because quite frankly, what has transpired is totally unacceptable by any stretch of the imagination. I also want to use this to highlight the sentencing guidelines provided by the CPS, or Crown Prosecution Services, so as to better understand why these two instances were sentenced in the way they were sentenced. I know how all of you are going to react when you hear this, or hear the stories that I am going to tell you, you are going to indicate death, life, some kind of tit-for-tat punishment. And I can certainly understand why many would feel that way, because, and I'm going to now state it, when it comes to children, most people tend to take the view that there is only one sentence. This isn't a negotiation. The sentence is death. The first case we are going to cover comes from Brighton, where these two people, Adam Jindrzejczak ooh, ooh, and Alenskra Kopinska, decided that in their infinite wisdom and in a desire obviously to be in absolute control over an innocent life, to break the knees, ankles, ribs and arm of a four-month-old baby boy. Now for reasons beyond my understanding, and beyond many undoubtedly, because we don't generally think about harming children because of how innocent they are, the couple decided that they would hide the damage, the injuries, from doctors for weeks, which would have undoubtedly left the poor little boy in immense pain. When a child is born into the world, they develop a natural attachment to their parent, so when the parent inflicts nothing but pain and suffering upon them, for whatever reason they decide to do it, the child is going to think that's normal. Thankfully, as this child is four months old, the child will hopefully be given a better home, with people who will love that child, and that child will more than likely never remember it, until they eventually find out they're adopted, and go looking for you two twerps, which will probably end when they find out that you two twerps, while rotting in a prison cell for a little while, abused him to near death. On the screen now are some of the x-rays taken of this poor little boy. This is absolutely shameful. These two, Adam and Alenskra, deserve to be put in prison. They deserve to be put on blast. The judge herself, Christine Henson, when jailing the pair of them, did tell them that this was wicked cruelty towards a tiny baby. It is premeditated. If you're trying to hide it, it indicates you were trying to do it so you could inflict more of it. I doubt you felt much guilt after you did this. Unsurprisingly, Adam has a previous conviction in 2011 for domestic violence against his own mother, and while in his relationship with Alanskra Kopinska, it was described as controlling and having high levels of anger. Shocker. 
Young girl falls for older man, older man has anger issues. But that's okay, he's bad boy, I can change him, right? Is that a trope at this point, because it just happens everywhere, or is it just cliché? Or are they the same thing in this instance? Doesn't matter. The evidence showed that they were caused by significant force. That is what the experts have said, with paediatric experts pointing out that this could have been caused by twisting motions and crushing force. This is brutality. During sentencing, and this part is quite fascinating, Adam had dismissed his barista, insisting sentencing should await the arrival of his lawyer from Poland. You, Adam, give a lot of really good Polish people who work in this country and work hard a really bad name. And by the way, of the 500 plus Polish people I used to work with, not one of them had a violent bone in their body. They looked like a body caricature in the sense that they only ever did abs and torso workouts. Leg days always skipped, but they were all lovely. When he was being sentenced, he argued he would be being discriminated against for not having his own lawyer. But as he had initially refused Brian Shaw before the hearing took place, the court appointed lawyer no less. There was no one that could in fact act on his behalf. Now, both these two people have been sentenced to eight years. For assaulting or neglecting a child and causing unnecessary suffering, and for causing or allowing a child to suffer serious physical harm. The sentencing guidelines from the CPS limits this particular type of sentence to 10 years, so you can certainly understand why they have received a sentence that is near the higher end of what is allotted or permitted with Adam having to serve an extended sentence and must serve two-thirds of his prison spell before he can be considered for parole. However, as he has shown zero remorse so far, I find it hard to believe that he will be out before his sentence is complete, unless prison does wonderful things to him or he converts to Islam and lies. The second case of child abuse that I want to cover involves a young girl called Lauren Wade, as she was two years old when she passed away, her death was caused by complications arising from malnutrition. When she was discovered as dead, she was emaciated and infested with head lice, because her lesbian mothers starved her to death. If she got a meal, it probably just came from one of the empty pot noodle cartons littered around the filthy flat they inhabited. This is Margaret Wade, and this is Marie Sweeney. They have been sentenced to six years and four months each. This poor, young, defenceless girl was raised by two of the most disgusting, abhorrent human beings on the planet, but somehow, with her being deceased, the sentence seems to be less for these two than that of those, and I think in this instance it raises the question of, I know suffering causes so much punishment, and therefore we must assess that accordingly when we sentence someone, but death is the absolute end of suffering, and this suffering was prolonged, maybe not bone-breaking, and I'm not comparing the two for the sake of saying his death was worth less than hers. I'm saying that her death should have put a greater sentence on the other two. Then again, I firmly believe if you're going to abuse a child, perhaps you should all be put to prison for the rest of your lives. If you can't be trusted to raise a child, you can't be trusted to live in a civil society, really, can you? And I say this having spent the last three days looking after my very sick sister, her very sick partner, and their two very sick children, one of whom is heavily handicapped, all the while trying to decorate a dining room and look after myself and do my own work. It's quite, apparently quite stressful. I have yet to uh, suffer the stressful part, but meh. This particular case involving Lauren Wade took place in March of 2015 when she passed away, Medical staff had tried to treat her, but no, she didn't stand a chance, and that is truly unfair. Evidence even showed that the lice she had in her hair had been there for over 17 months of her life. That is cruelty, unhygienic, how lazy are you? Even the biological mother told the police she had no guilt over her daughter's death. This tells you everything you need to know about the kind of people we are dealing with. The kind of people that think, I've got a kid, I'd either I don't want it, therefore you should therefore put the child up for adoption, or my child is an accessory and I must show off. And with you two, based on how you look alone, I'm inclined to believe the former 
as opposed to the latter, I can hardly imagine you two having a rip-roaring social life based on how you even keep your home, and how you two look. Disheveled is an understatement. Wade and Sweeney did admit willfully ill-treating and neglecting the child, and they pleaded guilty to similar charges in respect of two older children. This shows that with a family, they could not be trusted to raise them. Malnourishment was key. It was supreme laziness, although, based on the pot noodles everywhere, a very Scottish diet. This home, this home was so filthy, so filthy, that you couldn't see the floor. So filthy that there were flies living in the empty cartons of pot noodles. This was not a home fit for humans, it was fit for Nurgle. You two, you smug, smug dykes, you two deserve a longer sentence. So now let's find out what the sentence should be, so we can best understand why your sentence was somehow less when you have caused ridiculous levels of suffering in a different way, which led to one child dying and you not showing a shred of guilt or remorse. The sentencing guidelines from the CPS or the sentencingcouncil.org, which is linked below. This is a high culpability instance of including serious neglect and serious psychological, developmental, and or emotional harm from Category 1 for harm, meaning that Category 1, Section A, starting point 6 years, category range 4 to 8 years. Had they not entered a guilty plea, they would have gotten 7 years. In my mind, I think that the guilty plea, even though they didn't really mean it, should be null and void. You shouldn't give someone a lesser sentence because they've entered a guilty plea when they have not shown any remorse for it. They've just admitted they did something wrong, which they admitted already it was ascertained when the police investigated. Therefore, eight years, while not a high enough sentence in my mind, and I'm sure many of your minds, should be where the sentence should be. Now, if you do like this new Avatar look, please let me know below, and of course what you believe the sentence should have been in both cases. These four people must not be forgotten. They must not be allowed children. They should not be allowed near children. Yes, okay, this person here... Alexandra let all the abuse happen, so possibly there's a chance at redemption in the future for her. But she let the abuse happen. There is guilt there. Anyway, I hope you all have a lovely Monday the 21st of January, and thank you all for listening.